healthy and that they're growing a healthy company and that they're not burning out and they're actually going to put more money in their actual pocket too because that's why we start businesses so we can have the time money financial relationship all that free all the freedoms that it provides for us so that's why i started it and that's been a very high level journey of where we are today serving over 75 real estate investors slash entrepreneurs, business owners on a monthly basis with a fractional CFO company and helping them make and keep more of their money. Welcome to the Gentleman Success, Happiness and Fulfillment Talk podcast, where we bring to you the most successful, happy, fulfilled gentlemen from around the world who have been able to conquer themselves, their life, their marriage, and their businesses. You will be learning from four dimensional gentlemen who have cracked the code to the science of having it all. The question is, how can married entrepreneurs with kids become gentlemen, achieve true freedom, and build a successful, happy, and fulfilled life, marriage, and business? This show will give you the answer for that. My name is Alex Ramirez, and I'm your host, and you're welcome to the Gentleman Success, Happiness, Fulfillment Talk podcast. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to another episode of the Gentleman Success, Happiness, and Fulfillment Talk podcast. As always... I have an incredible gentleman here today with us. Uh, he's going to be talking about real estate and about more than that. And I'm very excited to get to learn from him, talk to him and connect with him. But before I introduce him to you, though, I just want to give a big shout out to all of you who have been leaving comments, reviews and likes on all the major podcasting platforms, Apple, Google, Spotify, and to those who have been watching on YouTube. Thank you very much. And I want to ask you for a favor today. I want to ask you that if you get something out of this interview, if you get some type of value, some type of new insight, a skill, information, or the inspiration to go out and take action to move forward towards your goals, I want to ask you to please share this episode with 10 people. Share it on social media, send it through message, send it through WhatsApp, Facebook, right? Copy and paste the link, but share it with 10 people since this is how we grow. This is how we're able to share our message and motivate, inspire, and bless other men out there to grow and change their lives. And today I have David. Richter, is that did I, did I get it right, man? Richter, Rick, it's Richter, like Richter, the Richter's tale. Yep, got it. All right, so I have David Richter. He's an active real estate investor who has the, been essential in closing over 850 deals over the past seven years, which include wholesale, turnkey, burr. What is, what does that stand for? Burr, B buy, fix. You know, it's buy, rehab, rent, refinance, repeat. Got it. Owner, finance, rentals, lease options, and anything, any exit strategy that you can think of. And while growing and building a real estate business from five deals a month to over 25 deals a month, he realized that as much money that was coming in, it was going right out the door as well, right? So with the unique opportunity of being in every seat as a real estate investor, he found a calling, uh, a calling in the company's finance seat to help business see where their money really went. So David has helped real estate companies uh, complete, uh, complete turnaround from going out of business to building cash reserves by using the profit first cash flow system, which over there on his right, on his left, I mean, well, on his right, our left, you know, you can see his book. So he's an author, a speaker, entrepreneur, husband, father, and I'm very excited to have you, David. Thank you very much for being here, man, and making some time and you are welcome, bro. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm really excited to be here today. Thanks, man. So, man, the first thing that I do with my guest is that I tell them to walk us through their entrepreneurial journey in 75 seconds or less. Mm -hmm. Wow. 75 seconds or less. So here we go. I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad in college. That was the catalyst for changing my mindset. Saw small business grow from five to 25 deals with the company that I became a part of in real estate investing while I was doing deals on the side as well too. And like building a portfolio and buying properties on the side from that company, which was awesome. And then from there, I saw that there was a big need in the entrepreneurial space that a lot of people know how much they're making on the top line, but they don't know how much they're keeping. And if they're mm. actually making any money or if they're spending too much or like if they're getting what they really wanted from their business. So that's why I started my business, Simple CFO Solutions, to help and implement the profit first methodology of making sure people actually put profit first in their business to make sure that their business is healthy and that they're growing a healthy company and that they're not burning out 
And they're actually going to put more money in their actual pocket too, because that's why we start businesses. So we can have the time, money, financial relationship, all that free, all the freedoms that it provides for us. So that's why I started it. And that's been a very high level journey of where we are today, serving over 75 real estate investors slash entrepreneurs, business owners on a monthly basis with a fractional CFO company and helping them make and keep more of their money. Nice. That's amazing, man. I love it. Um, yeah, exactly. That's why, you know, that's one of the purpose for, of, of business, right? Of starting a business to like have freedom, right? In every single area of your life. And I actually just started to read, well, not read, but listen to the book Profit First, right? So you are all about yep. Profit First for real estate investing. I'm reading the Profit First. I'm listening to the Profit First book. I don't know. I don't remember who the author is, but I started listening to it, man. And I'm, I'm super excited to get you to dive deep into, you know, into the concept, right? So yeah. yeah, tell us a little about tell us a little bit about that about that man. So, the concept first, and if you're a, a business owner or want to own a business, most business owners get fed the the BS formula that it's sales minus expenses equals profit. Meaning, I make a sale, I pay everyone else and their mother, and what I have left over is my profit. Hopefully, at the end of the day or the end of the year, or whenever I sell my business. And that's just rough because like that puts you in bad habits of always paying your expenses first without thinking of what is this business even viable? You know, like, is it a viable solution to a need in the market? And am I going to be able to be profitable as a business? So profit first, the mentality, the formula, we flip it on its head for profit first. It's sales minus profit equals expenses, meaning I make a sale. I take my profit first off the table. And then what I have left over is to grow the business and pay the expenses, but making sure I build in profitability to my business and not have it be an afterthought or an event that happens someday in the future. It's all about making profit a habit. This is the secret to wealthy individuals and wealthy families and wealthy business owners is that they know not only how to make money, but how to keep it. So it's building this habit of keeping the money in. So the second portion of Profit First is the actual practical steps. Like what do you do to make profit a habit inside of your business? And All that's right. why I like Profit First even more than some of the other books that I've read, like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, or The Richest Man in Babylon, because they give the concepts in there. They say a portion of all I have is mine to keep. They We, as a real estate investor and reading these other types of books like that, they're even telling us like, you should pay yourself first and you should make sure that your business is profitable. And it sounds like, duh, yes. But then I, then I see the, you know, the man behind the curtain and you pull back a lot of these businesses and they're just, they're, they're running on fumes. They're running on little to no cash flow, And it's like, why, why did you create this thing? So that's where the second portion, and if you want me to go into that, I could go into the practical steps of profit first. But that first step is that men the mentality, the mindset of, I'm not going to just focus on the expenses. I need to make sure we're focused on profitability and placing that as a priority, which sounds silly for a for-profit business, but it's so needed for just the entrepreneur to know it's yeah. okay to be okay as a business owner. All right. So yeah, let's go into the, into the mindset of that, man. So it's sales minus profit. And then what? Equals expenses. Meaning I take okay. the, I make the sales. I take my profit off the table first making sure that there's actual profit there. And then the expenses are what's left over. Like that, it's what I have left in my account Got to pay it. the expenses of the business. All right. So yeah, so then, so it's like discipline, right? You've got to build in the discipline of yep. paying yourself first, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and, and getting that mindset. So it sounds very simple, man. So, uh, all right. So you make a bunch of sales and then you decide how much you want to profit. And then, yes, that's the next step is making sure... And when a lot of people first start this system, if they're already a business owner, they might be thinking, well, I'm not making profit right now. How can I make a profit? You know, like just by placing it first. And it's more important that you build the habit, that you take a percentage of everything that you make and put it somewhere else other than to pay expenses. That's what it comes down to is that if you make a sale, no matter what, take 1% of that and stick it somewhere else other than your operational expense account or like your expense account to pay the expenses of the business. It's building that discipline of I'm going to separate out my profit from what I pay expenses from in the business. 
Mm, got it. I see how it, it would start to work. So then, you, you know, you reverse engineer how much you want to make. You would reverse engineer everything, right? Yep. So yeah, let's dive into the practical steps. Exactly. I'm trying so, to figure it out, but I would rather hear you say like, you know, going one of the it. biggest mistakes that entrepreneurs make in general, in real estate or not, is that they have one bank account where all money flows in. And that same bank account was where all the money flows <laughs> yeah. out too. And you're tossing a cash salad all the time. You're the sweetest chef on the Muppets. You're just, food is flying everywhere, you know, and cash is flying everywhere. Like, and you look at your bank accounts regularly, you see in my bank account, do I have enough money to spend on this thing? And usually we do that in our personal lives too. As, you know, as just human beings, we look at a bank account and we say, do we have enough money to spend on this thing? Oh, we do. Great. Hopefully I don't overdraft. Well, it's the same thing in business, the same habits you have in your personal life don't just magically go away and you become this great business owner when you build a business. So if you're looking at your personal finances like that, then you're probably looking at your business finances like that as well too. So the practical steps is instead of having one bank account where everything goes in and out of, set up some bank accounts specifically to be profitable. I call them in my book, Profit First for Real Estate Investing, the Golden Trio. I like I like movies. I'm a pretty typical person on planet earth here. So okay. I like the big epic sagas like Harry Potter and star Wars and like star Wars. They always have Luke Han Leia, right? Moving, yeah. making sure good wins in the end, making sure that the ending of the story is where good wins, you know, so they're defeating the emperor, you know, Harry Potter, they're defeating, you know, the Voldemort's, you know, the bad guys of, of the movies. Well, if you're building a business or if you're building a life <laughs> like with a family, your legacy is your epic saga. It is your story that you are creating. That business that you create is your epic story or the legacy that you pass on to your children, your grandchildren, that is your epic saga. That is your Star Wars. You're creating your own Star Wars. So that's why in your personal life or especially in your business, if you have a business, you set up three accounts and I call them the golden trio after Luke Hanalea. And the golden trio of bank accounts is a profit account an owner's compensation account, and then an owner's tax account. So that way, if you set up these three accounts, they're different than that one bank account where all your money's going in and out of, and you have no idea what's going on. You still have that account. You still have the operational expenses account, but now it just pays expenses. Those other three accounts, the profit owner's comp and owner's tax are for you, the business owner, or you, the individual to actually start building wealth. So, and I always get the, what is the difference between profit and owner's comp as a, and an owner's compensation as a business owner, owner's compensation is to get you out of your rat race is when you start Got a it. business, when you start a business, you have that, that number in mind usually. And if you don't, you need to, you need to figure out that number. What do I need every month to sustain my personal lifestyle and, you know, making decisions around that to say, can my business support my lifestyle? And that owner's compensation account is a very clear indicator if, I, if my business is able to fill up that account with enough money in there to support my lifestyle, I now have a business and not a side hustle. So mm. that owner's compensation is for you to take draws on a regular basis, just like if you worked at Walmart, you know, like making sure that you are paid from your business on a weekly, bi-weekly, monthly schedule to actually have the money that you need to live. So that's owner's comp. The difference between owner's comp and profit, profit is where it's like the icing on the cake. It is the reward for having a truly profitable business, meaning I took the risk, the reward, you know, for starting this business and working 80 hours for myself instead of 40 hours for someone else. It's like making <laughs> sure that you have that reward at the end of the day that makes it worth it. So that profit account, we recommend withdrawing from it on a quarterly basis. So not once a month or once a week or whatever, it's on a quarterly basis up to 50% out of that account, the profit account and use it for whatever the heck you want. Like make sure that it's a reward that you say it is. I'm so glad I put in those extra hours because I was able to take home this amount for my profit account and actually, you know, do whatever the heck I wanted with it and not just reinvest every dollar back into my business, which is a code for, I'm just going to have my my expenses escalate out of control. And then I'm going to cry in a corner in like a year from now because my expenses are going nuts. I want you to reinvest. I want you to reinvest back into your business, but not at the detriment of killing your business, of 
reinvesting everything in your expenses get so high that they run rampant. So there, there's my rant on the reinvesting back into the business. I want you to, but I want you to reinvest smart. But the profit account has a second purpose. You can also use it to crush bad debt that might be that might be hanging over your head, like credit card debt or what whatever it might be. Use up to 99% of it if you need to, to start crushing down bad debt that's keeping you up at night. That would be another purpose of the profit account. So that is some practical steps for actually implementing profit first, because once you get income to come into your company, you transfer the first percentage points of that income to those three accounts. So that way you're taking your profit first off the table. And then the rest of it goes into your operational expenses to run the business. So you're building wealth. You're creating this wealth habit from every single sale that happens from now on. So even if you're just starting out and you're making hundreds of dollars, put away 1%, 5%, 10% into profit. Like start at a percent that you can start at and then grow it from there. So mm -hmm. it's more important that you start this habit because this is a habit that wealthy people have. So there you go. There's some practical steps. Nice. Awesome. So let's see, is the profit account, the owner's co compensation account, and then the taxes account? Yes. So owners, right. the profit, owner's comp, owner's tax. All right. Awesome. And then, so, so all the money that you make, you know, a, you, you, you know, you previously decided, previously decided a percentage of profit that you wanted to take or, or a certain amount of whatever. So as soon as you make a sale, as soon as you make some money, you take that, you put it in the profit. And then from there you pay yourself. And then from there you pay taxes. Correct. That's yep. it. That's how simple That's it is. It. That's it. That's how simple it is. Can you pause the recording for a second for your editor? So, man, um, so those three accounts, right? The profit accounts, the owner's composition and owner's taxes. So, all right. So it's as easy as, you know, you, you make money. Then from that, you take a percentage into the profit account. Hey, sorry for the interruption. Real quick. Do you want to know how I've been using my podcast to build a multi-million dollar network with over 100, 7, 8, and 9-figure entrepreneurs? reach hundreds of my ideal clients with my message, coaching, service, and podcast, get invited to speak on four stages in the last two months alone, throw my own events and have over 100 successful entrepreneurs being willing to speak at my events, become a millionaire in one year, get mentored by multi-millionaires and achieve goals that I thought were going to take me 10 years to achieve in one year and ultimately get unstuck and make quantum leaps of progress in my business and life with less than one hour of work just by being myself. If you answered yes to any of those, I just want to invite you to a free training showing you how I've been able to build a multi-million dollar network that is helping me achieve bigger income goals faster with only one hour of speaking and just being myself. To be honest, I thought I was going to be a multi-millionaire, speak on stages, throw my own events, and live a successful, happy, and fulfilled life of growth and impact in 10 years from now. That seemed so far away. But my podcast has been able to help me do that in less than six months. I'm actually doing all of that this year at the age of 21 with my podcast. I'm reaching thousands of people with my message, my service, my podcast, my coaching. I've gotten booked to speak on four stages in the last two months. And on these stages, I'm going to be getting in front of hundreds of my ideal clients, making roughly around 15 to 30K plus per event. Not only that, I have a network of over 100 high level multi-million dollar entrepreneurs who have all agreed to speak at my events. Getting clients is a problem of the past. I've gotten the opportunities to learn from billionaires and I'm collapsing decades of time and I'm literally achieving what I thought was going to take me 10 years to achieve in one year. All of this because I use podcasting as a networking tool and I leveraged a rare concept called the cloak track and I want, you, and I want the exact same thing for you. Just imagine where you could be in one year from now if you get this free training right now. That is why I'm inviting you to this training. On this short training, you're going to learn how a small group of purpose-driven entrepreneurs, authors, coaches, course creators, and speakers have combined podcasting with this rare concept called the cloak track to build a multi-million dollar network, reach thousands of their ideal clients with their message, books, courses, coaching, make an extra $118,800, get booked on 10 stages, and build a successful network of entrepreneurs who speak on their stage, all of this in under six months. I'm going to walk you through the four steps to make this work. Step number one, alignment. 
getting clear on who you want to be, what you want to do, your goals, your purpose, and aligning all of this with building your podcast and your ideal podcast guest. Step number two, leveraging the cloak track to find your ideal podcast guest and never running out of them. Step number three, leveraging the cloak track to close an interview with anyone, no matter how rich, famous, or out of your league they may seem. And step number four, the content machine. The content machine is the key to tapping into other people's audiences. And I'm going to show you all of those four steps. The link to access this free training is in the description of this video. Click on it and go watch this training right now so that you can learn how you can to build a multi-million dollar network that helps you achieve bigger goals faster and with less effort. Note, this training is only available to 18 people. So act right now and I hope you enjoy the rest of this episode. Bye-bye. And then from that, you pay yourself. And then from that, you know, the, the taxes account. So yeah. I, I have two questions, man. The f- I'm going to tell you the second question first. And it's that I'm actually starting to make money now, right? So in the past three awesome. years, I'm finally started to like having some breakthroughs uh, with, you know, yeah. on the financial side. And, um, and I don't know anything about taxes, man. I don't know shit about taxes. Sure. So uh, I, would, I would love for you. I would love you for you. I would love for you to educate me on that. But, you know, the, the first question is, so then, so you, like you decide how much you want to profit. And then from I'm that, so you decide- sorry, man, she's in my room again. So, so the second question is around taxes, right? Like I said, man, uh, I started, I just started to make money this year and I don't know anything about taxes. Right. So, uh, that's the second question. The first question is, all right. So you, you make money and you decide a percentage of that money that you make goes into the profit account. And then from that you pay yourself right? You, well, the owner's compensation. So how do you decide how much to like profit? And then how, and then from there, how much do you decide how much to pay the owner's account, the the owner's compensation account? So in the books, my book for real estate investors or the profit first book, there's called taps, target allocation percentages or target transfer percentages, where depending on the size of your business, these are what healthy businesses should, should shoot for, for profit, for their owner's comp, for their tax account, and for their operational expenses. So if you get, if you pick up the books, they'll give you, depending on the size of your business, what to shoot for. But you need to realize right now, what can I do? How much percent can I do for owner's comp? How much do I need of what I'm bringing in? You know, like your owner's comp might be very heavy at first because you don't have a lot of employees. It's you, you know, it's like you're paying yourself. You got to make sure. So maybe you might be 50, 60% of the income. And it's like, well, that makes sense because you're building the business. You need to make sure that you're, you're healthy during that time. But that's where, wherever you are right now, that's what it needs to start at. And if you're not sure, or if you already got a business, start smaller and work up towards the targets as you go along. Got it. All right. And then from whatever percentage you profit, you take another percentage for yourself? Exactly. So the owner's compensation account is separate. That's like for the work you do in the business. The profit is the icing on the cake. It's the it's the reward for starting the business. And it's something to take on a quarterly basis that doesn't factor into anything else. It's just the profit from your company that you take out, or if you need to pay down bad debt, use that profit account to start wiping down that bad debt. And then the money you pay yourself is like if you were an employee of your company. Exactly. Cool. So let's talk about taxes for a little bit, man. Like I said, I'm starting to get, you know, a bit scared because, you know, I don't want to be one of those typical stories of entrepreneurs that start making a ton of money and then three years down the road, they're like, oh, like a bunch of money more, you know, to the government. So how do you right. manage that? So with profit first, you have to realize what we're talking about is the cash flow because cash flow and the manage the cash flow management can equal financial freedom. If you know where to put the money, you'll know where to the best ways to invest it in the best way. You'll always have the habit of keeping your money and keeping the wealth and making sure that you're building true net worth. Well, the tax account is to make sure as you grow and scale that you put a certain percentage into that account. So that way you're always covered so that you don't have to think come tax time next year and like, Oh shoot, you know, like I have nothing saved and they just gave me a six figure tax bill. Yeah. It's a lot easier on the way up to take out a little piece, little pieces of the income as you're going up and up throughout the year 
than it is to come to the next year and they tell you this is what you're this is what you owe and you're like oh my gosh you know now i've got to now i'm in debt to the government as one of my you know creditors or debtors here you know to be able to pay them back so it's all about the flow of the money cuz you if you want you, i'm not your person if you want to talk to a cpa about the dry boring side of like the taxes and like the different you know i like all that stuff but that's great for them what i want to talk about is you the business owner becoming mm -hmm. savvy enough to control every single dollar that comes into the business to make sure that you don't come to tax time and you have nothing in your business account because most entrepreneurs have to dip into their personal savings to cover the business the business taxes and it should be the other way around it should be the business is covering for the personal taxes of the owner because that's where their money's coming from yeah so do you know like what is that a little piece of money that should go 15 percent is what the target is for all income to go for i should say real revenue because mike coined that term and it's like at your gross profit let's just be general here what that money is so out of your money that you make and in the real estate world that would be like if you sell a property what did you make on that property 15 percent of that should go into the tax account and i know it's like well I'm self-employed, so my tax like brackets 39%. Well, in a business, you get to write off a lot of your expenses. So mm -hmm. just because you're saving 15% of your income does not mean that you're going to be paying 39% of all that income. You're going to have the operational expenses that you pay that will reduce your income burden, you know, or your income, your your taxable income that the IRS is going to tax you on. So rule of thumb: 15% of what you make should go into that account. And like I said, if you can't start at 15%, though, start where you can. Make sure you're saving something to go towards the government because they're going to get you no matter what. Like it's their money that they're, no matter what, you need to be able to pay that to them. Yeah. Sooner or later, right? They're going to get sooner you. Or later, sooner or later. So That's just to, just to make it clear, 15% of, of the owner's compensation. 15% of the income. So you have the income come in. Oh, got it. The income is, you know, coming into your you bank made. account. Exactly what you made. And then a certain percentage goes towards profit, whatever you set up, certain percentage towards owner's comp, whatever it works for you. And then up to 15% for the tax account of what you make. Okay. Got it, man. All right. So, um, yeah. So let's talk about becoming savvy enough to be able to be in control of, you know, like all, all the money that comes in and goes out. Right. So actually one of my goals for Q2 was having elite finances. That's literally what I wrote down. Right? And like, it's not, it's not like uh, specific enough, but I have in my mind how elite finances would look like. So it's basically having control of everything that comes in and comes out. And I've been spending yeah. about 15 to 30 minutes every single day going over my finances. And like, man, I, I, before I didn't know where my money was going. And now, you know, I, I'm kind of getting the hang of it. Uh, so yeah, that, so if I want to, you know, have elite finances, or like you said, becoming savvy enough of a business owner to be in control of everything that comes in, comes out, and how everything moves around, what else should we do? So I would set up, number one, a system like you did that tracking the finances, knowing what's going in and out. So in a lot of systems, it's like categorization. You know, if you, if you work deals or if you are in any industry, there's usually a CRM you know, like yeah. a customer relationship management software tool to follow up with your prospects. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the same thing with your money. That's what QuickBooks is to me. It's the software. It's the, it's the CRM of your money, making sure you can categorize it correctly. Where does it go? And what does the number, what do the numbers tell me? Because what does a CRM ultimately provide for you? The numbers to be able to say what's clarity. working and what's not. Exactly. It provides that clarity. That's what your financial systems should provide for you is that clarity to make proper decisions, the best decisions possible to put more money in your pocket and to have as little money as possible leaving your pocket. Yeah. So that would be number one, a system like that. We all, I would say like having a dashboard, we, with our company, we set up a CFO dashboard for the owner to say, these are the different areas you should be looking at the different levers, like from cash flow management to cash flow projections to marketing returns on investment. Like these are the different key performance indicators you should be looking at. So I would have some sort of dashboard like that, that tells you if, if something's, you know, like on fire, if it's, you know, like the check <laughs> engine light is on, or if like, if it, if the gas tank is full, great, you know, like those, it should be those indicators 
Another way to be an elite financial savvy business owner is running on profit first, making sure that the cash flow management is actually flowing through the business and providing you the freedom, the financial freedom that you want of actually having profit and paying yourself. So that's another thing too. Another secret is I call it the secret weapon of business. And that is having someone like a fractional CFO on your team or okay. someone that's not a full, a full-time CFO is going to cost you a freaking arm and a leg. But there are companies like a fractional type of leader that you can bring in where you're like, I have no idea what questions I should even be asking myself. But someone who's been down that road, who's worked with finances before to be able to say, here's what you should be looking at. Here's the systems you should put in place. You, your bookkeeper right now, they don't, they're not categorizing things correctly. Like You need to be able to see it this way to make the best decisions for you and your family and for your business. You, know, like you need to see it this way. So that's why I even started our fractional CFO company to give people that option that wouldn't have had it until they like scaled their business to 10 million and could hire a full-time CFO. This is a, a part-time CFO to be able to implement this so that you could actually have that business savviness and being that business owner and someone that's going to be there that doesn't cost nearly as much as a full-time CFO. So those are a couple of things you can implement to be able to build yourself up as the owner of the business, the financial savvy, but not having to become the technician or the expert in the finances. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, so I'm using QuickBooks. I actually started using QuickBooks like six months ago and I would, you know, I would keep on seeing the, 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 the monthly $60 charts. Right. And I would keep right. on seeing it and I would keep on seeing it. And I'm finally using it and starting to learn how to use it and categorize like every single one of my expenses and everything. So yeah, it's great, man. I, I I'm really liking this information. I hope, you know, everyone listening is as well. Right. And, and not only that, but that they implement it in, um, where can we get your book, man? So like if you're a real estate investor out there and uh, is, is Amazon the best way to get it or is there any other way? Yeah, there's a, you could get it on Amazon. If you go to simplecfosolutions.com, that's kind of like the one-stop shop for what we do. I've got the link to the book there, the link to our podcast, the Profit First REI podcast. I've got like, if you want to work with us too, you know, you can schedule a call. So that way we could see if we can help you and start implementing some of this stuff. If it seems too overwhelming, you know, we want to make sure that business owners are, true business owners keeping more money in their pocket. Yeah. Amazing, man. So let's talk about your podcast. So, and then after, you know, we talk a little bit about your podcast. I want to, you know, now go back to your story because people are probably thinking, oh yeah, this guy knows everything about finance and, you know, he does a profit first. Right. And all of that, but yeah. I'm not there. Like I, you know, I'm just starting. And then, you know, we can go back to your story because you, you, I, I, I have, I sense that you're probably not so, you know, like, uh, so deep into all of this. Right before. Right. Yeah. And I wasn't years ago. That's for sure. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, man, let's start, let's talk about your podcast. So what is your podcast about? Uh, who should listen to it? Sure. And um, yeah. And why Profit did you start first it? For real estate investors. So it's based around this book and this concept. And then I have a lot of guests on there talking about what have they ever lived paycheck to paycheck, deal to deal? Have they ever had money struggles before? I want people to understand that people have come from where they don't understand money to the other side of understanding money and how it, that puts more money in their pocket mm -hmm. and how that really helps them. And sometimes it's the emotional journey of I lost everything and then I had to rebuild it or like I built this habit early on and look at how much good I've been able to do. So that's really what the podcast is about to help people understand they can implement this and it will, it will help their life you know, level up inside of their own personal lives or in their business lives. That second one is the one that I'm doing, right? Instead of learning from having to go down and lose everything, well, learning right. from people like you and the people that you have on your podcast, right? From their experiences. Exactly. So it's from awesome. their experiences. I love that, man. So, so man, I guess you were not always this elite financial business owner, right? Correct. No, I wasn't. So, but I, in college, read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Before that, I was a machinist at a railroad factory and just, I had, I've always loved to read. That's probably the catalyst was reading good books mm. and not being afraid to talk to good people. You know, like those two things, taking action. Uh, but along the journey, I've had a lot of good people in my life that have steered me in the right direction. But I would say that, yes, I have not always been where I am today. But once we started putting these 
systems in place like Profit First and the and I could see the change in my business and my life and the others as well too. That's why I'm like, I have to get this message out as much as possible so people aren't stuck in their in their business rat race or in there, you know, like yeah. they go from a W2 job to business and it's like, oh, what are you doing? You know, why this wasn't worth it. So yeah, exactly. Awesome. So man, I also read Rich Dad Poor Dad. Um that's a pretty like uh you know traditional way into getting into entrepreneurship, right? Yeah, um, that's a that's a big mindset breaking book. So yeah. So how old were you when you read that? I think 19 Man, in college. That's awesome. So yeah, someone gave me that book very early on. Good friend yeah. of mine. And then so how old are you right now? 30. Nice. So you have a yep. like a like a 10, 11 year old year your journey under your belt. That's exactly. amazing. Man. Um yep. so you know, before, so I end my podcast with like five questions before I ask those okay. five questions, I just want to ask, like, what are some of the biggest lessons that you've learned in this 11 years of being an entrepreneur and, and doing everything that you've done? Don't give up. You know, if you've got a message worth sharing and if you've got something on your heart, that's going to help people just don't give up. I mean, that's the difference between failing and succeeding yeah, people that up. fail, just give up and they don't move forward. I'm not saying that you never, that you don't give up on the things that'll never work. I'm saying, just don't give up. If you've got that burning passion inside of you that you know, you're supposed to, to bring to other people. Yeah. I mean, amazing, man. So actually I hope this is different than what you just said, but the first question that I, that I always ask is what advice would you give your 20 year old self if you could? My 20 year old self implement profit first. <laughs> I'd probably <laughs> yeah. tell that, you know, like getting that concept honestly, for per my personal finances at that time too, just that whole creating a wealth habit. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So uh, until what age did you actually start implementing Profit First? Profit First? Uh, it was probably 26. So it was only four years ago, you know, like when I first started in, in, uh, started in doing it with the real estate investors as well too, and helping them get that up and running. So what do you think would be the difference if you had started that earlier? probably six to seven figures you know, like of money because I interviewed one person on my podcast and he told me if I would have started this from the very beginning of my investing journey, it would have been $5 million more in my accounts now today, like that's just from crazy. having this, this habit. So I'm like, that's why I tell people it's never too early to start a good habit. And especially this one that will serve you the rest of your life. And you literally gave the entire framework right now in the last like 20 minutes. So, yep. If you, you, everyone listening, right? You know what the impact this can have in your life, right? Exactly. At least $5 million in the next, you know, couple of years. So there you go. Awesome, man. Um, the next question is around mindset. So what is the mindset shift that you've had that you can share that you think has contributed to your success? Just, I think believing in myself as much as some of the other people that have been mentors and coaches have believed in me. So if you're starting out, you might not have those people in your life, but then you get to seek those people out and then you get to learn from them and then you start taking action and that action creates that belief. And then they see that potential in you and then you finally see it as well too. So I think that's one big mindset shift was like, I can bring value to the world. I do have something to bring. I have this message to bring. And I want to believe in myself as some of the other people that as you create a good sphere of influence, like, with Alex and listening to his podcast or other people like him, you know, like you need to get, you need to believe in that in yourself just as much as the people that believe in you do. Yeah. So right now, man, I have mentors and coaches for every single area of my life, but before I didn't. Right. And, um, like I started listening to a podcast, uh, to Jeff Lerner. I don't know if you've ever heard about him, but I, he has like hundreds of episodes and I literally every single day listen to at least one episode and that guy would release episodes faster than I could listen to them. So it was great, man. And it completely changed my life. Um, awesome. So man, um, the next question is mind to map. So do you have any ta tactic strategy or, or, or tip of advice to, for people who may lack clarity in their life? If you lack clarity, read some, read good books. That'll help you ask better questions. Read the book, the road less stupid by Keith Cunningham. He talks about how to process thinking time and having thinking time in your life. Cause if you can ask yourself the right questions, you can get any clarity that you want. The road less stupid. Awesome. I'm going to go and get it as soon as possible. The next question is around mindset map motion. What is one habit that you have that you think is contributed to is contributing to your success? One habit besides the wealth habit, the, the profit the first profit habit first. 
that's that I do every day is putting in the first things first in my calendar, making sure I have time for my wife, my daughter, you know, the things that really matter. And, you know, like, especially on the gentleman's podcast, like being part of a gentleman is helping the different areas of your life, like from yeah. family to finances and faith and making sure that those things get filled in first. Awesome. And the last question is, what do you think about measuring and tracking, man? <laughs> oh boy. You're asking the numbers guy, what I think about measuring and tracking. So I am in favor of it. I mean, we built a whole CFO dashboard for anyone we work with because we know the power of having the clarity of this is, okay, this is how much I spent. This is how much it returned. This is the return on that investment. I should dump more money into this channel. Or that was horrible. We should cut this thing off and never do it again. Or we should not invest in this person. They're horrible at closing or whatever it might be. Numbers give you power. It gives you control to know what's going on in your business. Numbers tell stories. Awesome. Awesome, man. Well, man, I've loved every, this podcast. You've dropped so much knowledge and wisdom. And uh, if you know people loved you as well, where should they go to find more Simple. of you? CFO solutions.com. You could go to forward slash gift, simple CFO solutions.com forward slash gift, and you can get uh, my first ebook for free and then profit first, the first two chapters on the audio book. So you can listen to it at any, any time and maybe break some mental barriers there and with those first couple chapters. Awesome. Thank you very much, man. Um, I've had a lot of fun and yeah, thank you, man. I'll see you later. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you for watching the Gentleman Success, Happiness, and Fulfillment Talk podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with one friend, leave us a comment and let us know. 99% of people never leave a review or comment, but we love and are very thankful with the 1% of you who do. If there's something or someone you want to see on this podcast, send me a message on Instagram at Alex underscore Ramirez 1020 and let me know. I say thank you for that. I have an amazing surprise for each and every one of you who does take the time to leave us a comment or review on YouTube or one of the major podcasting platforms 